This week on the program, Archiving the Past, a Holocaust survivor tracking the horrors of history. The people survived, it was a miracle. And when I want to convince people they should give a testimony, I just tell them, he had the privilege to survive the Holocaust. You should talk for those who can't do it anymore. For more than two decades, a Holocaust survivor has been recording the testimonies of other survivors in a makeshift studio in Melbourne. 94-year-old Philip Maisel has been trying to track the devastating effects of the Holocaust across the generations. But deep within the archives stacking up around him is his own story, and that of his twin sister, Bella. Sarah Farnsworth reports. This is a well-worn path for Philip Meisel. For the past 25 years, he's been recording the testimonies of Melbourne's Holocaust survivors. This was about four years after we started. How many interviews have you done? I personally over a thousand, possibly 1,300, something like that. The tapes are mounting up. The memories are like a lava who is on the bottom of the volcano. And the process of interviewing is people get rid of this accumulated trauma. Hidden in the hundreds of hours of recordings are stories of survival against the odds, including the complete story of Philip and his twin sister, Bella. Did you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have two brothers. A twin brother, and that's the best thing which happened to me in my life. Growing up in Vilna, in Poland, the Meisel twins were inseparable. Bella Hersham doesn't like to talk about the Holocaust, but recently took part in a yet-to-be-a documentary called Not Without You. We used to walk all dressed up and people used to show with the finger, look, they Meisel twins are walking. We were very, very close. We could communicate without words, just looking at one another. The Germans arrived in Vilna in 1941. Bella used fake papers and lived in hiding to avoid capture. But her brother Philip and her father were sent to live in the ghetto, along with 60,000 others. It was a separation soon to be made much harder when Philip was arrested in the street as the Germans emptied the ghetto taking those inside to the concentration camps. Bella was in the street when her brother was taken away. She ran behind, but she couldn't, yeah, to see what happened, but she couldn't do anything about it. For years, both struggled to survive the war in the concentration camps across Europe, each thinking the other was dead. And while liberation in 1945 brought Philip freedom, it came with an unwelcome reality. First, I was very happy, free, but when I realized that I'm somewhere in Germany, I don't know what happened to my family in Poland, it was a very, very sad feeling. A chance meeting with a complete stranger changed all that. And he said something strange, he said, you, Yiddish is a very funny Yiddish, and I know another girl in my camp where I live who speaks with a similar accent. And I said to him, and I know her name. It's my sister. Just days later, Philip travelled 500 kilometres on his motorbike to be reunited with his sister. One of the happiest days in my life. The, it gave me meaning, you know, I didn't have to think only about myself, but I could care about my sister. It's good to have a brother. It's something special. It's such a good feeling. Makes me happy and warm inside. So that's why I prepare the food with love. This is a collection of our VHS types, which later on we have to transfer to a different format to digitize it and convert it to DVD. That the people survived, it was a miracle. And when I want to convince people they should give a testimony, I just tell them, 
you had the privilege to survive the Holocaust, you should talk for those who can't do it anymore. As the Holocaust survivors get older, Philip has now turned to interviewing not just their children, but also their grandchildren, with the help of Karen Freilich. I did a call out on some of the Jewish community pages and through networks and stuff, and we had quite a lot of interest. A lot of people put forward their name. Okay, so we what was your name? the interview. Basically, to see how the trauma affects the second and third generation so how, how do we do the in what way. We'll concentrate on the emotion of the person. So you zoom it in closer. Okay. While the grandchildren are a new addition to the project, a few common themes have already emerged. Food was probably the biggest one. Um, food's always been a really big part of Jewish culture. There was always this need to have a lot of food in the house and to eat a lot, to always have spare money lying around, you know, in a, in a safe place. Kind of this just-in-case mentality. So before, before I was too small. At 94, Philip will soon end his time as the Keeper of Miracles. Who's going to take over from you? I still don't know. I hope I will find somebody. <laughs> the matter gets urgent. <laughs> A 10-year plan to make his work available online is slowly coming to fruition. What is extremely important in this project is that you know, it teaches people humanity. Now he rings me every morning about 9 o'clock just to say hello and tell me the weather forecast. We should love one another instead to hate and the results of hatred are terrible.